what we are going to do? We are going to keep R and W. That is R is again rental and W is wage rate. We are going to keep these two fixed. Okay? And we are going to vary Q. Okay? What happens to the problem? Let us look at it graphically. In other words, what we are trying to do? Again, we are trying to minimize R K plus W L with respect to K and L such that F of K comma L is equal to Q. And how we are changing the problem? We are changing this Q. Okay? To represent it graphically, what is happening? Our ISO cost map does not change. It looks like this. Let us say for a particular value of W and L, this is the way it looks like. Fine? And let us look at the ISO quant map. This is the ISO quant map representing different level of output. Let us say, let us call it Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Fine. Here we have capital and here we have labor. Fine. Of course, believe me that what I mean to show is that they are tangent to each other, although they it is not very perfect diagram. Fine. Now, what we can do? Remember earlier in the consumer theory, again and again I am talking about consumer theory because if you have understood consumer theory, it is lot, it is very, very easy to understand the producer's theory. Okay? That is why I am going back to what we have learned earlier. Remember earlier we talked about income expansion path, price consumption curve. So, something similar we are talking about here. Okay? Here we are talking about output expansion path and what is output expansion path? We can output expansion path is nothing but a curve that passes through the cost minimizing combination of inputs as the output quantity Q varies while the input prices are held constant. Okay? So, let me just say again this is not perfect and let us say again we do not know, but I am just making it up. It is going like this. Fine? Okay. Now, if you pay attention what is happening, we, we should look at in this zone here, I look at it here. The labor requirement is L1 here labor requirement is L2, here labor requirement is L3 and in this case labor requirement here is L4. What I am saying as Q is increasing for some zone L required, the input required to produce Q optimally, optimally in which sense? The, in the cost minimizing sense, L is increasing, but in some zone L is decreasing. So, earlier remember we defined something called normal good and inferior good. Here also we can define normal input and inferior input. Versus inferior input. And what is normal input? When output is increasing while keeping the prices of all the inputs fixed, an amount of input required to produce output at the minimum cost possible manner and the input that particular input increases, then that input is normal input. So, can you repeat it? Okay. So, what is happening? we are increasing the output okay while keeping k and not k while keeping the r and w fixed we are not changing okay 
R and W fixed and we are increasing the output Q. What we are talking about here is R, W and Q. These two are fixed and we are increasing Q. Now, there are two possibilities. K value of K after putting here R, W and Q, it may go up as Q goes up or it may come down as Q goes up. If this happens, capital is the normal, normal input. input. If this happens, then the capital is inferior input. Similarly, one can talk about labor also. Huh. As, but remember, two things we are talking about. One, that the prices of all inputs are fixed. Fine. And we are not talking about any, any combination of input to produce this output. The combination should be such that it minimizes the cost of producing that amount of output. So, these two things are there. Fine. So, now we have learned about output expansion path. Now, I want to bring the concept that we learned earlier short run and long run in this discussion. Okay. What is short run? A period where at least one input can is fixed. fixed. One input can, cannot, be, cannot be varied. Okay. And here all inputs can be varied, can be changed. Fine. Now, let us look at it. Here, we are talking about a production where we have only two inputs and invariably we take that right, we have been talking about it that L we can change even in the short run, but it is difficult to change the capital in the short run. It is not true, but this is the theoretical position we have taken in this course for illustration. Okay? It depends on the scenario, the legal framework and various other things, but we are not talking about that. Now, let us look at it, the output expansion path that we have been talking. Let me go back to that earlier graph that we had. Here is the graph that we have talked. Let me just say here, even before we talk about output expansion path, let us talk about cost minimization. cost minimization in short as well as long run. And what we have been talking about? We are talking about minimizing R k plus W l with respect to k and l such that f of k comma l is equal to q and this is q. And then we get here, this is what we have done. We have Okay, this is the point of tangency. Okay. So, what we are assuming basically that we can reach to this point by changing k and l, okay. but that is feasible only in the long run. So, although we have not mentioned, but the problem the cost minimization that we have been doing that is long run cost minimization. Do you understand? This is, is the long run cost minimization. What happens in the short run? Short run we have one more constraint. What is that constraint? The short run, the position that we have taken in this particular course, in this particular chapter that in short run k cannot be varied, k cannot be changed. So, what we have? The short run cost minimization problem is bit different. Short run cost minimization, let me write it. What we need to do is basically minimize R k plus W l with respect to k and l 
such that f of k comma l is q and one more that k is equal to let us say k bar. This is also this is extra. So, we can rewrite this problem little differently. How can we rewrite it? Rather than writing using two constraint, what we can say? What we have here, let us get rid of this instead of k, what we have to use is k bar. k bar and here we have to use k bar and then we do not need to say here, but this is what basically we are doing. So, coming to this graph, let us say k bar is here, this is the k bar level. Can we reach to this point? No, in short run it is not possible to use the this particular cost minimizing combination of input, and output. input in the cost minimization um, combination of k and l. It is not possible because we are forced to use this particular k bar. We are forced to use this particular level of k and to produce q output we cannot if we take L, that is the earlier amount, earlier we derived that we need this L naught amount of labor and K naught amount of capital to produce Q at the cost minimizing level in cost minimizing fashion, but that is no longer possible because of this K bar we end up using this particular amount of labor. So, do you think which one is going to be higher? The co which cost is going to be the higher? Let us say we want to produce Q, short run, cost. short run cost is going to be at least as great as long the long run cost minimizing, co the, the long run cost of producing Q. Why? Because why as because this K bar it depends on the K bar. What if we say that k bar, the k bar that is selected is equal to k naught. In that case, the, the cost required to produce q amount of output in long run and short run are going to be the same. same. But the cost to produce in the short run is never going to be less than cost to produce the same amount in the long mm -hmm. run. Just think about it logically. In long run, you are allowed to vary everything, capital and labor but in the short run you are not allowed to vary capital. So, you have less degree of freedom. Okay? So, best what you can do in the short run to get to, to get the cost that is feasible in the, the, the minimum cost that is feasible even in the long run. You cannot do better than that. Fine? So, if we solve this problem, what we get? This is so, if you solve it, what will you get? K you have to use as K bar and L is going to be a function of R, W, what else? Q and also a function of K bar. Here, in fact, in this particular case, the problem is very simple because you had two degree of freedom, you can change R you can change k and l, but now in the short run you are not allowed to change k. So, there is only one particular level of labor that will give you this particular amount of output and that is this. So, basically you are not doing any optimization, you have only one point and out of one point you have to pick the best point. So, there is only one possibility, fine, but imagine a scenario where you have more than two inputs. In that case, you are not able to vary one input, but in that case you will have to do the optimization, cost minimization and then you will get this particular form, fine. And what is going to be the cost? Cost is going to be a function of R, W, Q and K bar. Why? Because cost is nothing but R K plus W L. Okay, fine. Is it clear? Yes. Any doubt about it? 
and let us say one more thing I would like to say just for convenience, let us say that W and R are determined by market, it is not in the control, it is in not in the firm's control. So, what we, we can say roughly we can write C is a function of Q in the long run and C is a function of Q and this particular level of capital, capital in the short run. Fine. So, let us see what happens to the output expansion path. Let us go back to this graph. Let us say capital is fixed at this particular level. So, how the output expansion path will look like? A horizontal line. This will also give us the output expansion path. So, you should be clear when you are talking about output expansion path whether it is long run or short run you are concerned about. Okay. Similarly, for the cost minimization you have to worry about whether you are talking about short run or the long run. Fine.